Welcome back to our course on Windows 10. In this section I'm going to take a quick look at how to search your files and folders to find particular content. I'm going to cover this reasonably quickly but I think it's important for you just to get some idea of what's possible and then if you think that you're going to need to do more searching it's certainly a good aspect of Windows 10 and File Explorer to look into. So first of all I'll show you a basic search or two and then I'll talk to you about the search options that are available. And finally in this section we'll take a look at file properties which apply to any type of file in Windows 10. I should point out that you can also search using Cortana. I'm not going to cover that on this course but again it's something that's well worth looking into. Let's start with what on the face of it is a pretty straightforward search. I've selected my main pictures folder here. It has many many subfolders and each of the subfolders has a lot of pictures in it and I'm looking for pictures of horses. So one option I have is to use the search box which is just over on the right there just below the ribbon and it says search pictures. It will search pictures and all of its subfolders so I want to find pictures of horses I'm going to start by just typing the letter H. Now as soon as I type the H File Explorer homes in on everything with an H in it and immediately if you look at names of pictures there such as Modern Hotel Snowman there's an H in hotel that's fine but some of the other images for instance the very first one there's no sign of an H in the name of that file I'll come back to that in a moment so that's H, let's type O, I'm only typing the letters, I'm not hitting enter or anything like that, O. I'm now down to half a dozen entries, four of them are clearly matching the HO on hotel. So let's do the R in horse, and then we only have two images that feature horses. Now the second one is called Moscow Horse Statues and these are actually pictures that I took in Moscow with horses in a statue in central Moscow so that's clearly a picture with horses in it but the one on the left doesn't seem to have any sign of horses in the name let me just change the picture to extra large icons and you'll see that it actually is a picture with horses in it so is Windows 10 recognizing horses no it isn't when it searches for the term that you've typed in such as horse in this case it looks for that in the name of the file it will check whether that corresponds to the type of a file if it's a file that contains text a letter or a report or some sort of document it'll look for the word horse in that but it'll also look for tags and although we're not really going to go into this in detail on this course you can tag your files and um, many people tag their photos to actually say what's in those photos the photos on my computer have mostly been tagged by me and if I right click on that particular file go down to the bottom click on properties and then click on the details tab you can see the tags for that particular picture and the first of the tags is horse and that's why it's found that file. So when it's looking for horse, it's not just looking at the file name, it's looking at all those things, including any tags that have been applied to the file. So what we're going to do now, having done that first search, let's cancel it. All I've got to do to cancel it is to click on the X there. And I'm basically back to where I started from. And now I'm going to do a different one. I'm going to search for Revo. This is the name of an abbey in the UK. So it begins with R I R I. I've got two pictures there. In this case, the two file names have Revo Abbey in them. But I've also got something Tongariro River, which is a river in New Zealand. So I'm just going to type in the E so that I only see the Revo Abbey ones. And now I've got two files. One of them is a WAV file, one of them is a sound file, and one of them is a JPEG file. So that's a picture. 
So now let's take a look at the search options and the search options are applied using the search tools search tab that you can see on the ribbon at the moment. I'm not going to go through all of the options. This is certainly a good area for you to experiment with, but let's have a look at a couple of them. So for instance, if I was looking for a particular type of file, let's suppose that I only wanted a sound file, a music file. If you go to the refine group in that tab, one of the options there is type. And if I click on the drop down for type, I could say I'm only interested in music. Now, this will include any kind of sound file, such as a WAV file, which in this case is actually a commentary about Revo Abbey rather than music. But if I click on music, I'll only see the WAV file. Whereas if I say I want to see pictures, I'll only see the JPEG file. Now amongst the other options that you can see here are options such as the size of the file. How big a file is it? You can also apply date restrictions. I'm going to do date in a separate example in just a moment. But apart from these refinement options, you have options, for instance, to save this search. So if you finished up building up a search with a few options and you decided you might need to do this on a regular basis, you can actually save a search. So you could, for instance, save it in your own searches subfolder in your user folders. Searches have a particular name, but having done that, you could then reload that search and apply it again at a later stage. You can also go back to recent searches. These are the last few that I've applied. And then you have some advanced options that again, I'll let you look into if this is likely to be of sufficient interest and use to you. So let me close this search and just do one more. Let's suppose I want to look for files with IMG in the name. Now for one of my cameras, this is part of the default name that the camera gives to any pictures that I take. So there will be many, many files with IMG in the name. Notice that when the contents of this main pane in File Explorer are just too much to fit, I get this scroll bar automatically on the right and I can use the scroll bar to scroll up and down to look at all these IMG files. There are a lot of them. In fact, if you look at the status bar, you'll see that there are 2,200 pictures with IMG in the name. But let me now apply a date refinement on the search. So let's say I want to look at the ones that were taken last year. And that narrows it down to just 1,006 items. What about last month? There weren't actually any last month. So let's go back to last year. And the, here you can see all of the pictures in my pictures folder or any of its subfolders that have IMG in the name and were taken last year. So that pretty much covers the basics of searching. But I want to just look at one other thing while we're in this folder. And that is that I showed you just now how to look at the properties of a file. And you will probably quite often need to look at the properties of a file. Let me take one of these pictures, one of the ones that was taken last year. If I right click on it, you've already seen one or two options such as delete if I want to delete the file. But right at the bottom, I have properties. And the properties of a file are arranged into a set of tabs. Security is one, details is another previous versions is another. Let me go back to general first. This tells me the name of the file, which I can actually change. It tells me exactly where it's located. It tells me how big it is. And it tells me when the file was created. And in this case, it was created on Monday, November 21st, 2016, which is almost certainly when the photo was taken. So that's some useful basic information about this file. And if I click on details, I'll get some more detailed information that's of specific importance and use for a photo. So for instance, if I go further down here, I'll see 
the dimensions of the image it's 2448 pixels wide 3264 pixels high its resolution is 72 dots per inch you can even see the make and model of camera that it was taken on now file properties apply to any file that you have on your Windows 10 computer exactly what information is stored will depend on the file type but it's very likely that you're going to be looking at file properties quite often as you use Windows 10. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you need additional Windows 10 training, check out our complete playlist right over there. And if you need even more training, we have a nine hour course for Windows 10, which you can get by clicking down there. And if you like this video, be sure to like and comment below. And I'll see you next week with additional videos.